Hello and welcome to another review of Health Apps. My name's Dr. Tom McWright, I'm an NHS doctor, and today we're going to be reviewing the Spirobank Smart Spirometer. I've had to practice that a few times. Now, like all of my videos, this is not sponsored. I've had complete creative control, and apart from sending me the licenses for the apps or the technology to try, I haven't received any financial incentive, so this is an independent review. The Spirobank Smart Spirometer has revolutionized home spirometry, allowing us to telemonitor a range of different pulmonary conditions. Why is this needed? Well, if you look at best practice guidelines for managing things like COPD, there is a requirement to do annual monitoring, which should involve at least asking about symptoms, inhaler technique, smoking, whether they're getting any complications, and an annual FEV1 and FVC, so you need spirometry. When I looked at that, that seemed to be the only thing really that was preventing us supporting these patients completely at home. That and the fact that you need a spirometry to actually diagnose the condition. If you actually read the NICE guidelines in the UK for the management of COPD, they say telehealth monitoring does not improve quality of life or reduce hospitalizations for people with COPD and it leads to higher costs. However, the committee did not want to prevent telehealth monitoring being used for specific reasons, so they only recommend against routine telehealth monitoring. They then go on to say that evidence showed that self-management plans improve quality of life and reduce hospital admissions. So my question is, what about a device that does both? That does telehealth monitoring and supports patients with their own self-management? And this is the niche that the Spirobank smart meter fits into. The first thing that you'll notice when you get this out of the box is how tiny it is. It is super portable, super light. Forget the days of that big clunky spirometer sat on the nurse's station. This is mobile technology. You'll notice there's a small sensor on the front. This is actually for oxygen saturations and we'll come to that later. But this is the main device and lining the inside of there are a range of different, mo uh, a range of different sensors that will detect airflow through the central space. It also comes with a number of different turbines. You can either get a reusable turbine that you just clean between uses or a disposable turbine, which is one of these. Now to fix it, dead simple, you just put it in, push it hard and then twist it. And then there we go, your spirometer is ready for use. The next step then is to connect it to your mobile phone. And there is an app that you need to download, which you can find on the Google Play Store or the Apple Store. Warning, the instruction guide actually tells you to download an old app. It hasn't been updated yet. And this did cause quite a bit of trouble with me finding the right app and managing to connect. But once I had the right app, it was dead simple to connect. There's no kind of finding it in your Bluetooth devices. It just connects automatically. And then you're presented with the option to go ahead and test yourself. Now, if you ask any doctor or nurse what they say to patients when they're using a spirometer, they'll usually say the same thing, which is that you need to blow long, fast and hard. No jokes, please. For that reason, I thought a telehealth application might embed a video that could help patients understand how to use the right technique, which this didn't. But there were written instructions to guide patients and there is feedback on technique, which I'll demonstrate in just a moment. I don't think anyone looks attractive when they do that. As you can see, that's generated some figures. Or in fact, all the figures that you would expect from a standard spirometry report. And we can also see it on a graph, which I think is particularly helpful for healthcare professionals since that will easily identify whether a patient might have an obstructive lung condition or a restrictive lung condition. You can also plot out trends and see how you did on previous days. And you can see a few of my readings uh, that I did earlier on today. But what I especially love is that you can download a report in a PDF format. And with this, you can then potentially send it to your practice, to your GP, to your respiratory consultant for them to review. And the report is laid out exactly how I, as a GP, would want to see such a report. You would just need to tell patients that the email isn't going to be encrypted unless they go the extra step to do so. So by sending that report through Gmail or Yahoo account or whatever email account they use, it's not going to be secure. Their health data might be a little bit at risk, but if the patient consents to that, I think it's still acceptable to use it. Like I said, there is also this SATS probe. 
And I think this really would come into its own if I was lending this equipment out to a patient on a more longer term basis. For instance, a patient might benefit from it if they wanted better control over their exacerbations and some thresholds at which they should seek the advice of their GP. There's also advice that's come out in a British medical journal that for managing long COVID, daily oxygen saturation readings can be really helpful. So it's another potential application for home SATs monitoring with a device like this. To use it, we simply press our finger over the, over the sensor. I did find it was a bit sensitive, although the instruction guide says you can hold it like a phone, in reality, I had to place my hand on the desk to keep it still. And then after a short time, you'll see that I'm starting to get some good readings there. What I didn't quite understand is, regardless of what my oxygen saturations were, I always got a low perfusion warning, and I have flagged this up to the company as a possible bug. I therefore just point out to patients that that might happen and that they shouldn't be concerned unless it drops below an agreed threshold. In conclusion, I thought this was a great product and potentially really helpful for even diagnosing COPD, but certainly for managing patients with COPD and other long-term respiratory conditions. NICE do advise against telehealth monitoring for COPD patients, but as I said before, they also support anything that helps self-management of such patients because it can reduce hospitalization and improve quality of life. So I think this fits in the niche where there is a crossover between both and so I would certainly recommend using it or considering its use in general practice. That's all we have time for for now. Thank you very much for listening. As always you can find me online. I'm on Twitter at Mikkel underscore doc. You can also find my website where I have some blogs, I post these videos and that's tommickelwright.com. Thank you very much for listening and look forward to seeing you next time.